Hey everyone, it's Denise Brown. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm going to give you an overview of our various training programs to give you an idea of which might be a good fit depending on what your goals are and what your vision is for your work with family caregivers. So I'm going to go through the presentation and then those who are joining live, I'll stop the recording and answer any questions that you might have. Okay, so here we go. So the premier training program that we have is the Certified Caregiving Consultant Training Program. And I like to, hi Kathleen, I like to think of them as life coaches for family caregivers and former family caregivers. I went through life coach training in 2004. I had already been working with family caregivers for about 14 years, and I had started online support groups for them in 1996. And because I was sitting with them every day in these online support groups, I wanted to make sure that I was bringing my best, knowing that oftentimes I was encountering individuals that were really struggling with the worst time of their life. And so that's when I enrolled in life coach training in 2004. And so when I created the consultant training, I really pulled out the communication strategy that I learned in life coach training, because that was the communication strategy I used every day. And I saw it work every day. So in life coach training, I learned all these tools and techniques. And there was one that I used every day, every day. So that's what I teach in the consultant training. Okay, so I just want to make sure that um, I start off with just talking a little bit about how consultants make money. So one of our consultants has contracted with her county, and she now provides support to direct service workers that, can, that includes family caregivers. Another one of our CCCs has been um, contracted out with an employee assistance program to provide elder care support services. Another one of our uh, consultants billed out $4,000 in November for delivering two different presentations. And she was hired to deliver these presentations because an organization had saw her present at one of our events. And then we've had consultants who have been hired to provide programming for state specific organizations as a result of presenting at our events. We have another one who's created a paid membership program for family caregivers. She uses a closed Facebook group. Another one received a grant through her area agency on aging to present the caregiving years throughout her region. And then our consultants are also paid influencers and paid content providers. And they also provide one-on-one -on -one sessions and group coaching with family caregivers. I should also mention that some of our consultants take the training to enhance their career. So we have one consultant who actually left the workforce during caregiving. She took the training program while she was in the midst of her transition. And because of the training program, she was able to find a job that she wanted coaching. So some do use the training to enhance a career within an employer, and some do start their own business. So we do have an impact in terms of really creating awareness around the caregiving experience. We've been in media and articles and social media campaigns for startups like Careflow, which is an app for financial family caregivers, and for other types of advocacy campaigns like Embracing Carers, which is an initiative that's been organized through a large pharmaceutical company. And so they profiled some of us through one of their awareness campaigns. And then just about two years ago, several of our consultants were quoted in an article on OprahMag.com. We keep track of our mentions in the media, and I do add them on a page on CareYearsAcademy.com, and I'll share that page when we get to the end. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so you just could go to CareYearsAcademy.com slash news. I try to keep current with our mentions in newspapers, online, and magazines. So when I think about the business I'm in, it's really about creating opportunities 
and preventing regrets. I realized probably about 10 years ago that one of the ways we heal during a difficult experience is when we receive opportunities. So opportunities that I've really created for family caregivers over the years includes being able to blog on a national website. So I launched caregiving.com in 1996. I sold it in March, 2020 to Ohio's hospice. And I was really one of the very first websites to just feature the blogs of family caregivers. It wasn't about doctors and lawyers and other healthcare professionals. I wanted to be the voice of family caregivers so that our expertise is what is in the spotlight. And then I hosted a national caregiving conference for four years between 2016 and 2019. And the presenters were family caregivers and former family caregivers. And because of that, those who presented at the conference were able to include on their resume or on a website that they were a presenter at a national caregiving conference. Just to be able to say that feels good. And then I really think that our work within this space is around preventing regrets. How can we support a family caregiver right now with the right resource so that tomorrow, next year, in 10 years, they don't have a regret around an inpatient moment or an indecisive action that they feel like, you know what, I did the best I could. That's what our work as professionals in this space is about. But I don't want to do this by myself. <laughs> that is not fun. I want to be amongst the company of individuals like you guys. I want to be with others who have a like-minded passion, who want to make a difference, who really believe that collectively we can do so much more than we can individually. I want to be a part of a movement. Okay. And I think it's also important to notice and to note that we know that a caregiving experience is a painful one. We endure pain every day. And I also want you to know that if you're thinking about launching a business, that can be a harrowing one. There are similarities between a caregiving experience and, and running a small business. And it's important that we receive support around both. And that's part of what I build in to the training program, support if you're starting a small business. Okay, so when I think about what I do to help those in pain, it's about training individuals on how to be with them, to sit with them, to listen to them in their pain, not to jump in and fix them. So I just saw this today on Twitter, it happens all the time. Someone was sharing his caregiving story and everybody jumped in to tell him what to do. Well, he had done all that, right? So you get so tired of telling people, I tried that. That doesn't work. It's so frustrating. Of course, we know that there are other options. Of course, we're trying them. What we need is someone to say, oh, I get how hard it is. It's awful when you hit that brick wall over and over and over. So in the training program, particularly the consultant training, which is for coaches, it's really about how do you listen? How do you validate? How do you just be with someone in pain? And in order to do that, you have to have a comfort level with just being there rather than jumping in and fixing. Now, of course, we offer suggestions and ideas and resources. However, we only do that after we've listened and validated and asked. So we engage in this meaningful conversation. And when you're in a caregiving experience, you know how hard it is to find someone who will engage in a meaningful conversation about your life, because it's too painful for people to hear, but our consultants can do it. So when we think about the current state of family caregivers, we know that the mental health challenges they're experiencing are on the rise. So think about this. Two thirds of survey respondents, 
said they experienced mental health challenges during the pandemic, such as anxiety or depression or suicidal thoughts. So we have millions of people in pain. And our goal in our work is to keep them company, to know that they are not alone, that they don't have to go through this without support, that they have our support. So we're not therapists, we are coaches, we are consultants, and we use a really, very particular type of communication strategy to really sit with someone in pain. I did add training this past fall to help consultants if they do have a client who expresses suicidal thoughts. And that training is really just our communication strategy, just a reminder that what we already do is how we support someone who is experiencing significant mental health challenges. So our work is around ensuring that a family caregiver feels understood. You've experienced this. If you've had a, a difficult time and you're just venting about it and someone jumps in to fix you and tells you what to do, you just want to scream, I don't need to be fixed. I'm not wrong. The situation I'm in is wrong, but I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. We just want people to listen to us. And truly, family caregivers need our work and they need our movement. So we really focus on the right resource at the right time, providing understanding and compassion in order to relieve the stress of caregiving. We facilitate caring conversations. We create meaningful connections so a family caregiver is not alone. And we have these really innovative and profound tools that are so simple. And that's why they work because in a complicated time like caregiving, a complicated tool is too difficult for us. I actually just experienced this on LinkedIn. Someone had shared a graphic around how we find the right support during caregiving. And it was just like straight out of a business book. And I thought, I don't <laughs> I didn't get it. I just need something simple that helps me pinpoint what I need. And that's the goal of our tools, our wheels. And I'll show you what one looks like. And then the other goal is that regardless of what's happening in the world of caregiving, we're able to pivot to meet those needs. So the pandemic started, we pivoted to meet the needs of family caregivers during the pandemic. We had immediate training to help our consultants manage what was changing during a hospitalization. So they understood how to support family caregivers who were trying to manage a hospitalization at a distance because they couldn't visit. So I'm very in tune, I try to be, I'm committed to being in tune with trends and then sharing information with consultants so that they can really speak to a client who's experiencing those trends. Okay, so I like to create success for those who go through the training program, for myself, for all of us. So I do ask individuals who attend our virtual meetings that experience the tools and the planning sessions that I've created to tell us what do you think. So for instance, every month I hold a free family emergency planning session for family caregivers. This is actually what the consultants offer, but I want to know what works about it, how people respond to it so that it can help the consultants deliver the best experience possible when they are managing these planning sessions with their clients. So I ask for feedback when I hold these planning sessions. And for instance, the family emergency plan has really been a success. 100% of those who have attended those sessions say that they recommend this program for others in their life. So it's important that we create opportunities. So just a little bit about me. I sold caregiving.com in 2020 to Ohio's hospice. And I launched the first training program in January of 2016. 
I currently help my parents who are 90 and 87. And I started my own personal caregiving experience after my dad's bladder cancer diagnosis in 2004. And I'd just like to clarify that our programs are not about becoming a, a certified nursing assistant or a home health aide. They also are not about a disease process. And they aren't about the logistics of starting a business because there's so much out there right now to support you. You can connect to your local small business association, your local chapter of SCORE, which is Service Corps of Retired Executives for support around starting a business, the logistics. You can use an organization like LegalZoom, for instance, to start your business. But here's what the training programs are. They are for those who have a personal or professional caregiving experience. It's about supporting the family caregiver and or the former family caregiver. And it's a way for you to create your meaningful work and the way that works for you. You could become a volunteer, you could become a business owner, or you could be a different type of employee in your career. So because we're not specific to a diagnosis, we are specialists in the practice of family caregiving. That's what I teach. I teach what the experience of caregiving is. You bring in your knowledge of your own personal caregiving experience. And then I show you the themes of caregiving through the training program, especially the consultant training program. So in all the training programs that I've launched, we've had over 300 who have, from six different countries have enrolled in our programs. And the goal is to help you make a difference. Lead a support group, for instance, or add a service like coaching or consulting to your small business. So we have a variety of training programs at a variety of price points. We have master classes. We have an advocate training, which is one hour. It's just about 30 bucks. And it really helps you think about what do I want to change in the caregiving experience? And then how do I want to talk about it? Our facilitator training includes caregiving support groups and grieving support groups. I just added a grief support facilitator program. Our specialist training is if you want to become a virtual assistant. And I think that the specialist program is perfect. If you have been a family caregiver over a period of time, you feel like you've managed the stress, you figured it out, and you wanna make a little bit of money on the side, the specialist training is the right one for you. The consultant training is, again, the premier, the higher priced program, and that's where I teach you how to become a coach or a consultant to help family caregivers. Our educator program is the next level up after the consultant training. The educator training allows you to present the six caregiving stages as a workshop, a conference session, or a presentation. You can charge for it or you can deliver it for free as part of your marketing tools. So in order to become an educator, you have to take the consultant because the consultant training is a deep dive into those six caregiving stages. It really helps you when you wanna deliver the workshop then because you understand those six stages in a really profound way. So I enhance the training program and improve it. So. I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about how I've improved it over the years. So my life right now, Will. So Kathleen, for a specialist, they manage the to-do list. They manage the calendar. They help with scheduling. So the specialists who have gone through the training also might help with meal preparation and grocery shopping. So for instance, one of our specialists decided she was going to help plan out a meal for five days and then actually help with creating the shopping list. So what she did is help that family and that family caregiver manage the meals for her family. We have some apps that I recommend specialists use. So for instance, a specialist could help organize help. If you've ever looked at any of those apps that help you create like a circle of care, the specialist could help 
that family caregiver manage that circle of care. So let's say the family caregiver says to the specialist, I need someone to take mom to the doctor's appointment on Friday. The specialist says, great. Posts a request through the app and then organizes it for the family caregiver. So the family caregiver just delegates organizing that to the specialist. We've had specialists who have thought about how do I help with creating rituals during the year to honor the caries. So could be planning different special events for the family, can be helpful during the holiday season with organizing the ornaments and the decorations, making sure that they get put up, they, they get taken down. And it also could be just something simple like just sending a reminder to the family caregiver that someone's birthday is coming up, asking the family what they want to buy for them, actually doing the shopping, and then sending off the gift. So it's this idea that the specialist takes on the tasks that we think, oh, I just don't have time for that. The specialist does it for the family caregiver. So the tools that I added in 2018 are our wheels. And here's an example of one. We have 40 plus different wheels that we use in support groups, one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching. And then just added more to our training program in 2019. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because you guys get the idea. I constantly look at what can I add, improve, enhance in the training. So what the training program is today, six years after I launched it, is so different than what it was six years ago. And I think that's just, I'm so happy about that. I really took the experience of delivering it as a trainer and then listened to the participants and then thought, what do I want to add? What do I want to give them? What do I want them to receive? What do I want them to experience? So it always was inclusive of the six stages of caregiving, but it's that much more expansive. It always included a, a very particular communication strategy, but how we learn it is expansive. And then we have mentors in the program. If you go through the silver, silver level, so those are skills consultants, and they are consultants who've been through the training program. And then... The educator training includes the six stages of caregiving, plus a new workshop I developed last year, which is the daily healing plan, which has been a huge success. So it helps individuals think about what's hurting today. How can I help soothe the pain? And what's an emotion that I want to feel like peace or forgiveness, acceptance. And so the daily healing plan is the bonus workshop you get as an educator. Okay, and then we have some new assessments that are just awesome and some new planning tools. So our consultants get five planning tools that they can charge clients for once they become certified. I'm adding coaching, group coaching tools, March 1st. So in, a, in addition to these one-on-one -on -one and group planning sessions, the consultants also have the opportunity to lead group coaching and get paid for group coaching. So if you wanted to offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and then think, you know what, I'd like to do group coaching because it could be a lower cost point for family caregivers. So instead of a family caregiver paying, you know, 50 bucks for a 30 minute session, maybe they join group coaching and they pay 10 bucks for every session. And as a consultant, you have five in your group coaching. Okay. And then I'm working on splitting out the training and the certification. So that should happen in the next two, couple months. I'm waiting for the IRS to give us tax exempt status. So the training will happen through the Caregiving Years Training Academy and then certification for our programs will happen through a nonprofit called the Caring Board. So there's a split. It doesn't impact anybody. 
it's just a way to have a little separation between the training and the certification. So there's three levels of training for the consultants. So the basic level is bronze. With the silver level, you have mentors. You also achieve facilitator and educator certifications, and you get more support from me around marketing and launching your business. And then in the gold level, you even receive even more support around starting a podcast or an event or writing a book. And then we have been approved for CEUs. Kathleen, I have to reach out for you. I forgot to do that. I just remembered. So I will do that for you. Okay, so people ask me all the time, well, why, why would I become certified? I really believe that if we're, if we're gonna go out and serve family caregivers, we need to be our best. That's why I went through life coach training. I wanted to be my best if I meet an individual at their worst time. And that's what the training program that I've created does for you. In addition, we're accountable. We have pledges, goals, and beliefs as consultants that we actually have to ad adhere to. I also believe it's important that a family caregiver knows that you've really invested in your knowledge. That's important. And then you also learned from me how to actually be successful. So I've tested all kinds of different programs and offerings. And so I include what I know works. So it's a way for you to save time because I figured it out for you. I went through the pain of uh, the different of trying things out. So Kathleen, I'll give you the pricing after we do the recording. Sometimes the pricing changes, and so I hate to have a recording with pricing, but I'll go through pricing after I go through the presentation. Something that I think is really important is that you are compassionate, open-minded, and curious. Those are really important skills. And it allows you to connect to a family caregiver without bringing your own story into the space. So your story inspires your work, but your work with your clients is about their story. So this is hard work. I'd love to say it's easy peasy that you could just go through any kind of training program the next day you would be automatically successful. It is hard work. Anytime you try to put your work out in the world, you're gonna have fear. You're gonna have nerves. It's gonna be intimidating. But one of the things that I've created is a community that supports you. So the consultants who've gone through the training meet every month to connect and share and support each other. We are doing our second annual CCC meeting in the spring this year. Actually, it's the third time we've done it. So we also have longer events where the consultants will lead a workshop about a marketing strategy they use or a particular tool that they've used with a client or a particular strategy that they've found successful. So this idea that you're not out there alone is really important. You know, we felt like that during caregiving and I have felt like that as a small business owner. So this idea of a community is important. And then you have an opportunity to be a presenter at the different and various workshops and events that I host throughout the year. And then just quickly, there's people like to come to the events, basically this feedback is that people say nice things about our events. And then I am always trying to figure out what's the initiative that gets our work out in the world or that helps me test or try something new. So I believe every organization should have a caregiving department. I believe caregiving benefits should be actually a caregiving department. If it's a benefit, it's within, it's outside of the business, right? So typically it's a third party that provides the benefits. I believe the caregiving department has to be a part of the business so that you know the staff of the caregiving department, so that you know you can trust them, that you like them, that you wanna reach out to them for support. So we have a caregiving department on Caring Our Way, which is our opportunity to showcase the work of the consultants, the work that I've created. And it's 
really just the way that we are piloting this caregiving department. And then I have an outreach program with libraries. We reach out to libraries to provide resources they can use for their patrons and for their employees. And then we have different pilot programs that the consultants can participate in as well. Okay, so there are the different training programs. So we're gonna do a raffle in just a minute. I would be happy to answer any questions that you feel okay asking on a recording, and then I'll actually stop the recording to answer anything that comes to mind that you think, ah, I don't want, I don't want it on the recording. Okay, so I think I think we're good. So we're gonna I'm gonna stop the recording and thank everybody who's watched the recording. Thank you for watching this. And please know that you can reach out to me to schedule time to talk out your own individual goals and figure out which training program might be the right fit for you. And below the recording, there's actually a link to my calendar. You're welcome to schedule time for a one-on-one -on -one phone call so we can figure out what's right for you. Okay, so thanks everybody for watching our video.